In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of partial derivatives. Thus far, we have dealt with functions of one variable, such as what we have right here, y is equal to f of x or 5x squared plus 3. In a function like this, our dependent variable, our y variable, is a function of one variable, and that's x. y is responding to only one independent variable, x here. However, the reality is that most relationships in economics involve two or more variables, such as what we have here, z, which is a function of both x and y, z being x squared plus y squared. Now in this example, we still have one dependent variable, z, but it's going to be responding to two or more independent variables, in this case just the two, x and y. Now thus far, when we've been dealing with these singular variable problems, we have been really curious about how our dependent variable y is changing with respect to x. Well, similarly, when we have a function that's of two or more variables, like what we have here, we're still curious how that function is going to change. In this case, we're curious about how z would be changing with respect to x and y. And this is where partial derivatives come in. So a partial derivative is the derivative of a variable with respect to one independent variable, assuming that all other variables are held constant. What this implies, we have a function here that's a function of more than one variable. Z is a function of both X and Y. What we're looking at with partial derivatives is how z would be changing with respect to one of the variables, only one of the variables. And to do this, we are going to assume that the other variables are held constant. So we're looking at how it might change with respect to x if y is constant or vice versa. So let's talk a little bit about the notation that we'll use. We have the notation di z by di x or di f by di x or f sub x. All of these mean the exact same thing. These notations are interchangeable. What they would indicate is the derivative of our z function with respect to x and x alone. It would assume that the other variable y, because f is a function of both x and y, is being held constant. In other words, this is the rate of change of z with respect to x only, assuming that y is constant. So z would not be changing with respect to y, it would be changing with respect to x only. Now we also have the notation di z by di y, or di f by di y, or f sub y. Once again, these are all interchangeable notations. This would indicate the derivative of z with respect to y and y alone, assuming that the other variable, x, would be held constant. This would be the rate of change of z with respect to y only. Assuming that x is being held constant, we would be looking at how z is changing with respect to y and y alone. Now let's do some examples to show how this is implemented, how this is done. Example one, z is equal to a function of x and y. It's x squared plus 2y squared minus 2xy plus 5. And what we're going to do is we're going to find di z by di x, the partial derivative with respect to x, and then di z by di y, the partial derivative with respect to y. So first let's do di z by di x. This is our partial derivative with respect to x. This means that we're going to be looking at how this variable x is changing, assuming that our y's are constants. So only x is changing, y is going to be treated like a constant. So doing this, I would look at my first term here. The derivative of x squared would be 2x. And then we have 2y squared. Now remember, y is going to be treated like a constant, like the number 100 or something like that. So this value here is a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. Next, we're going to look at this negative 2xy. Now remember that negative 2 and negative y are going to be treated like a constant. And then I have the derivative of x and x alone, and that's going to be 1. Finally, I have the derivative of 5. That's the derivative of a constant. 
so that would be 0. Now simplifying this, I have di z by di x is equal to 2x minus 2y. And that would be my final answer for the partial derivative of z with respect to x. To recap what we did, we looked at the derivative with respect to x. So I'm highlighting any term that has an x in it. These other terms are going to be treated like constants, as is negative 2 and y in this term. Those would be our coefficient 2x. y is going to be treated like a constant. Now let's do the partial derivative of z with respect to y. Di z by di y is going to be equal to, well, now what are my y terms? I have a y term here and I have a y right here. Everything else is going to get treated like a constant. So my first term, x squared, is going to get treated like a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. Then I have 2y squared. The derivative of that will be 4y. Now I have negative 2xy. Negative 2 and x are going to be the coefficients. They're going to be treated like constants. So I have the coefficient negative 2x times the derivative of y is 1. Finally, I have the derivative of 5, which is simply 0. Simplifying this, I have di z by di y is equal to 4y minus 2x. And that's my final answer for the partial derivative of z with respect to y.